Some people say beans and grains didn't exist until 10,000 years ago, and therefore, they're not our natural foods, and our bodies aren't programmed to eat them, and therefore, we are meant to eat animal products. What does the best science have to say about this? The whole paleo philosophy would have us believe that uh, our ancient ancestors spent all day with, with a mastodon in the freezer, and well, we ate mammoth meat all day, and that's what we do, you know, or caveman, we eat, we eat mammoth meat. Um, well, the reality is that when you, you, the anthropologists like Dr. Nathaniel Dominey from uh, Dartmouth goes to Africa and looks at the skulls of the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthal folks, what he finds in between their teeth are starch grains. And the, the, re the reason why is that despite the mighty hunter myth, which really is a myth, first of all, well, let's get real. Most hunts were unsuccessful. For most times, the guys came back empty-handed, <clears throat> and there wasn't anything to eat. If they did drag some carcass back in, it rotted within days. There was no refrigeration. You, uh, it certainly didn't last very long. And when you examine the fossilized fecal droppings of these people in their Paleolithic camps, you see, you see the massive amount of fiber these people were eating, 150 grams a day. And the truth is, from all that scientific uh, extrapolation, is that the majority of calories brought into the Paleolithic camp were gathered by the women who spent all day foraging and pulling up starchy roots and tubers and gathering edible grasses and berries and nuts and seeds. Once again, the women got us through the tough times. And, and we were starchivores back then, and we're starchivores now. We, we, we basically live on, on starch-based diets. And to think there weren't wild grains and wild grasses and wild seeds back then um, is simply not true. They were, they were quite abundant. We ate a whole lot of, of plant-based material. The majority of what we ate were plant-based uh, foods. And so for them to spin this story out that, uh, that this is unnatural, no, it's been part of our diet probably before we started foraging, or along with our foraging for carcasses or whatever, uh, however meat got into our diet. So uh, no, I, I don't believe that uh, legumes and, uh, and uh, grains are uh, problematic foods in our diet, and they're the ones that really have sustained us throughout history, and, they, and the majority of civilizations now eat a starch-based, grain-based diet. Every, every culture uh, has either barley or wheat or corn or potatoes, some starch as the main calorie source uh, of their daily fare, and that's the way it always has been, that's the way it is today. Are hemp, flax, and olive oil good for us to eat? Should we try to eat these oils in our diet, or should we try to avoid them? I'm not a big fan of any oils. <clears throat> now, that's not to say that I'm against fats. Yay, fats. We need fats. Your skin oils are made of fats. Your hormones are made of fats. Your cell membranes have a layer of fat. Yay, you need fat every day. But the, what we're advocating is get those fats out of whole foods. Get those fats out of avocados and almonds and walnuts and, and ground flax seeds and uh, ground hemp seeds, etc. Why? Because when you eat a walnut or you should eat a piece of coconut, the micro droplets of walnut oil, coconut oil, olive oil, if you're eating an olive, those micro droplets of oil are firmly attached to the fiber of the walnut, of the, of the coconut. And when you chew it up and swallow it, it takes hours for your digestive enzymes to work their way into that little piece of walnut or coconut and to start digesting away the, the, uh, the carbohydrates that are surrounding the oil droplet. Then the lipases have to get in and emulsify the fats. And as a result, it takes hours for the, um, the micro, micro amounts of oil, of oil in the whole food to get into your bloodstream. The amount of fat in your blood rises very slowly. One pass through your liver is pretty much taken out of there. doesn't have much of, a, of an actual physical effect. But you send the coconut to the, to the presser or the olives, to, and you crush the fat out. And now you've got a bottle of liquid fat. Oils are liquid fat in a bottle. <clears throat> and you pour a couple tablespoons of, of liquid fat on your salad. Ooh, Mediterranean diet, heart healthy. No, it's not. Unlike that 
those little micro droplets of coconut oil in the whole coconut. Uh, you pour a couple tablespoons of coconut oil on your food or olive oil, that fat leaps into your bloodstream. Nothing slows down the absorption. Suddenly, you've got two tablespoons of liquid fat floating in your bloodstream. Well, it starts exerting ph pharmacologic effects. Now, first of all, um, uh, many of these oils injure the lining of the blood vessels, and, and the blood vessels become stiff and inflamed. They lose their lovely elasticity to absorb the shock wave that comes out of the heart with every beat. Uh, so uh, these vessels, the, these oils generally are not heart healthy. They actually, they injure the artery walls. And second, <clears throat> especially the heavier saturated fats in coconut oil, Will will start surrounding uh, the <clears throat> the red blood cells. A tiny little envelope of fat surrounds every one of these little red blood cells. Well, <clears throat> that makes them sticky, and so the red cells start sticking together, and your blood becomes more viscous, becomes thicker uh, after eating these heavy saturated fats. Blood viscosity goes up. Well, now you've got to force more viscous blood through these tiny capillary beds. It takes a higher pressure to force like forcing molasses through a soda straw. It takes a higher pressure to force that, that thick blood through your capillary bed, so it raises pressure. And, and, the, and I've seen the uh, motion pictures through a microscope, very dramatic. The, this thick blood flows very slowly through the capillary beds. You get sludging through the capillary beds. Well, that's not good because if you know, we're talking about the capillary beds in your eye or in your brain or your heart, the red cells that are coming into the capillary beds to drop off oxygen, ooh, they're moving so slowly that the heart cells, brain cells, retinal cells have a long time to extract oxygen out of those red blood cells. By the time that poor red cell gets down here, there's no oxygen left. And those poor heart cells, brain cells, kidney cells, they're, they're left hypoxic, they're left short of oxygen. And so it messes up oxygen delivery, these heavy fatty uh, oils. So between what they do to the artery walls, how it raises blood pressure, how it slows down oxygen delivery, and say, what are we doing? Why, no other animal does this. Uh, there, there's nothing magic about these oils. Uh, we're looking for that magic bullet. We, we modern homo sapiens. We, uh, heaven forbid we, we eat healthy, but we, man, we want that Himalayan sea salt. We want those asahi berries. We want that kombucha tea. We want that flaxseed oil, that coconut oil. You know, we're looking for that magic key to health. The key is the food. The key is a whole plant-based diet. We have the same digestive system, basically, that our gorilla and bonobo cousins have, and they're up in the trees now eating leaves and fruit, and that's basically what our digestive system is meant to run on. And keep those whole plant foods going in. You wind up lean and healthy, and the whole oil thing becomes irrelevant and actually um, uh, not beneficial to our health. Hmm.